G'day and welcome back to my channel. It's Santa Harry here. Yes, it's actually it's a Doctor Who scarf. It's bloody hot to be wearing this in Australia this time of year. But look, I do it for you because I've got a festive mood. Yes, I have. My mood is festering, yes. Now look, because it's Christmas and I thought I'd give you a little sort of special extra video just to cheer you guys up or, you know, spread a bit of cheer. Look, it's another Santa. And this is a Santa Gabriel. Yes. Yes, this is the St. Gabriel, which is Vasco da Gama's ship. Yes, he's the guy who circumcised the entire world. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And, um, <laughs> hello, sailor. <laughs> yes, uh, this is an Occidental kit. I found it sitting at a, at a show, at a model show, on a bloody, you know, underneath a cupboard, behind a bloody um, a pillow, and you know, a dog was sleeping on top of it. It was all covered in dust, and I went, oh, what's that? And they only wanted one and a half shekels for it, which is nothing. It was like less than 10 bucks US. And it's actually quite a rare kit and quite a find. So, would you like to see what's inside the box? I know I would. <laughs> Roll the music. Okay, here she is. Now, it, uh, I've cleaned this up. This was absolutely covered in dust. It was just thick with dust. It's the um, 500 year celebration of Vasco da Gama. I think that's what V Centenario, right? You know, basically like a centenary, 5,000 years or whatever. 1 100 scale, it's a Carrack, of course. Not always my favourite sort of type of ship. I find them quite ungainly. I mean, I prefer the English and the French sort of, you know, um, ships the line and the Dutch, of course. I like all that look. But good old Vasco, yes. Let's have a look at what he has got. Now, it's Occidental, which um, isn't spelt like um orient or anything or the you know it's just one c it's unusual because it's portuguese so there you go as i said i couldn't find instructions i've told everyone online looking everywhere for instructions couldn't find them and eventually found sylvester had reboxed this as the conquistador ship right basically from the uh, 16th century so that was from super hobby as you can see taken from super hobby only copy i could find I don't know. Hopefully I'll be able to find better instructions somewhere. And you need them because the build is a little bit different. This is the absolute cherry part of this. Look at this. This is cloth. Cloth cells. None of those plastic crap that you get in the airfix kits. And, you know, even Heller tries to palm off bloody vac form plastic bloody sails. No! Actual, real um, cloth sails. And they've got the, um, the sail lines and everything on already sort of embossed there and the crosses all you got to do is stick them in a warm cup of tea for a while and get that sort of slightly brown look well it's got seagull shed all over it and they look great they look fantastic so that's good i think it might even had a no it didn't have a copyright year i forget when this kit came out it was somewhere in the 90s or something like that now hull halves <laughs> uh, it's like a toy ship but this is actually how they were this is exactly how they were yeah very high forecastle, very high sort of stern castle area. It's it's a wonder they just didn't topple over the water. It's absurd, you know. So it's basically your main deck is way down here, right? So there's your um, there's your gunnel there. So your main deck is below those cannon ports. So there's your main deck, and all of this is way above there. Craziness, absolute craziness. So here are all the parts out of the box, and there's a fair few. Uh, there's the other hull, which we'll look at before. I think we look at the other one. We'll look at this one. I know they're both the same, just reflections of each other. So, yes, crazy thing, crazy thing. Nicely detailed, it's got all, unlike, you know, some of the Airfix and Heller kits and everything, it actually has all the pillars in here and the planking. It's all done for you. So, you know, I described that on my Airfix kit. It's all, all been done for you there. So, that is quite nicely done. Yeah. So, it's a lovely detailed kit. Reasonably clean moulding, only a tiny bit of flash there, but I mean, you know, it's actually quite a detailed and interesting moulding because that's kind of how these ships were. They they were kind of this colour. I mean, they were. It wasn't the light oaky colours that we have with our, um, you know, the English and the French ships and Dutch ships. Uh, these were redwoods, so they did have that sort of really dark sort of colour. So that's the thing. You could paint it up, make it look like that. I have seen someone do this with a whole lot of colouring on the upper sections. He had all the livery painted in. I think I'd do that when I build it. I'll make it pretty. Yes, good old Vasco. I'm sure he was. He was a colourful fellow. There's a stand. It's a sort of basic sort of stand, but you know that's okay. At least you get something. You get something. Uh, what have we got here? That appears to be. 
I would say, yeah, that is probably the main cell. So, yeah, because those, um, those cloth cells are quite big. So the main cell is probably about 10 inches or so. Let's have a look. Got a measuring thing down here. Yeah, it's um, 44 centimetres. So that's, that's not to be sneezed at. That's going to be a nice big spread. Whether it's going to sag, oh, you know, might have to make that out of wood or brass or something. So it's not very detailed, so we could place that. It looks like quarter deck. If they have such things on these ships. All the planking has been scribed. It's there. Even the nails are on it and everything. But I would have, and in fact I do have, that's like about 5mm I think, about 5mm planks. I've got those. I've got wood veneer ones that I could use. I really want to spiff this up. But actually because it's not going to have the oaky planks, it's going to have, I think it would have dark wood planks as well. Have to research that and see. If you know, were the deck planks a lighter wood or was the whole thing the dark red woods? I don't know. So here's the rest of it. That's your main deck and it's a nice piece. I mean, you've got your scuttle there and everything. It's it's nicely moulded. It's it's simple and clean. It's got a lot of scope for um, washing and making it look kind of, you know, really shrippy. So that's quite good. What else we've got here? We've got the, uh, the transom or the tail piece. And as I said, I've seen someone paint this all up with all these different colours and they've gilded around the windows and everything. And they sort of did that sort of thing back then. So maybe, I mean, at the start of his voyage, it was probably all painted up and looked really good. And then as it got to the end of the voyage, all the paint had fallen off, you know, after he'd been circumcising the world. Yes, yeah. There's a figurehead here. I assume that's going to go on the bow. Can you see that? Sort of a maiden with a flying dress and everything. Oh, it's an angel because there's wings. Oh, it would be St. Gabriel, of course. Yes, St. Gabriel. So I wonder if he's got a horn. You know, the guy usually has a horn. I probably wasn't that excited about the journey. I mean, how could you keep a horn going the whole time? I mean, really, you'd need Viagra. Uh, what, what bass? Oh, not that kind of horn. Oops. Uh, yeah. Sorry, nanny bots. Oh, I'll go get demonetized for this one. Whole lot of ladders. Actually, those are the nicest looking paddles that I have seen, or oars. Normally you get oars and they're really dreadful. They really look awful, you know, all these kits. But those are actually quite good. I'm probably... Not really seeing much from my fat hands in the way. Uh, we've got some cannons. There's not a lot of cannons on this because, I mean, it's a voyage of discovery. The only thing you need these cannons for is, you know, just in case there were some pirates. Yes, pirates. Um, get that out of the way. Um, there are rat lines. And for this scale, for 1 100 scale, that's oh, probably not far out. 1 100 scale, they should be 4 millimeters apart. So they're, they're pretty close. But I could measure those up and then make a nice rat hub. And... Um, do it myself. And again, I don't know about the dead eyes. They're usually sort of more a blocky or triangular shape for this period. We would have to see. We'd have to research that. Find out what Portuguese dead eyes were like. Mm. But you could use, if you wanted to, you could use that. It's clean. It's clean. You just you know, paint it up and it'd be fine. Lovely. Lovely piece of moulding. I mean, it's such a surprise, this kid. I just thought it'd be something pretty sort of basic, you know. So we've got here masts and yards. So they're all kind of kind of good. That one's a bit sort of bent, but I think that's oh, we'll have to have a look at that. It could be. Could be a bit damaged. But um, oh that should be easy fixable. If not a magnet. This one's got a big ball at the top of it. Was it a bloody lightning rod or something? Did they have balls on top of them? Oh pommels, yes. A lot of the a lot of masts did have pommels on, that's quite right. And they've got the yokes on them, so don't know if you can see that, but the yokes are there. So the yoke, no yoke, yokes and pommels, yes. And then here, um, I don't know, fly screens are pink, because you know, you're going in the tropics and everything, there's going to be a lot of bugs, so they've got the fly screens. I don't know. All right, we'll have a quick look at the copy instructions, see if that makes any sense. We have a huge erection here. Um, that would be the main mast, so that is going to have, and that'll only be the lower part of it. So. That's it, my It's even got a cleat. It's even got a cleat moulded. Look. Can you actually see that? Little cleat there. That is quite lovely. Don't know. It's probably a bit hard to see. Some sinkholes and everything and filling. Oh, you know, that's expected. And there's a bit of warpage in that. But then again, they might have got bent at sea under the, you know, the, the weight of all the wind and everything. So who knows? Who knows? That could be the upper piece. Don't know. Look at the instructions. But there's a yoke there, so 
Well, you're getting an idea of the size of things. It's a big model. Let's have a look at our last fret. Don't fret, last fret. And this is the weird part about it. When I was sort of trying to figure out how the hull halves went together, and I could not get them to go together, because I thought, oh, I don't need instructions. And I realized I couldn't put the hull halves together. That's because there's a keel. This part here is the keel. And that has to go in so that you put your hull halves in. So yeah, this is the problem with the hull halves. You sort of just go to put them together and go, hang on, they don't, they don't fit. There's nothing to click onto. They've, um, they've got outies. They've got outie little things, but they've got no innies. So they've got two outies together, you know? Um, yeah, it's uh, sort of having a bit of a, um, you know, okay, no judging, no judging. You can have two outies together. Yep, yep. But you need a keel. So if you have two outies together, you need a keel between it with some innies. That will work. Lots of blocks for these. And they look more of a period. They're the kind of blocks that you would have in this sort of period. So they are you know, very different to the ones that um, we would do on things like the Bounty and the St. Louis. These look a little more like old and timey blockies. So there we go. A couple of buckets there, because just in case you know, you're know you not feeling well, I don't know what they are. Maybe they're not buckets. Oh, they're barrels. They're barrels. So yeah, they're barrels. They'll have your gunpowder or your rum. Fighting platforms, yes. Oh, I like to call them crow's nests, but I'm informed. Even when they're round, they're still fighting platforms. Yes, crow's nests only appear on merchant ships. Yeah, so there's your rudder. And again, very clean, very nicely molded. It's a lovely little kit, it really is. It's going to be a, a joy to put together and wax and paint on. And again, those um, fighting platforms, beautiful. No flesh to cut out. This whole thing is just, it's, it's such a surprise for like, you know, basically one and a half shekels, you know. So again, another mask with a pole. There we go. Some um, belay. Now, they always get this wrong. They always get this wrong because there was no such thing as belay pins at this period. They really didn't exist. No. So that's for tying off your ropes. There were rails, for sure. They didn't have belay pins. They basically just tied them off against rails. So don't know, but this is sort of the more modern. They didn't really come in until maybe late 17th, early 18th century was the belay pin and actually a thing. Yeah. If you know different, if, if maybe the Portuguese had them, they were way ahead of everyone else, let me know. But as far as I know, yeah. This whole thing, people put belay pins in and on some of the older, you know, 16th century ships. No, no, didn't have them. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't a thing. So we've got bulkheads here, which have been nicely rendered with um, water effects. So that's quite good. That could be, I'm not sure where that is. We've got, we've got quite a lot of poop decks. These are definitely pooping decks. Pooping decks and upper pooping decks and super pooping decks. So we've got that. This could be part of a rudder mechanism or something. Or it's just a very big hockey stick for the days when they're bored and they wanted to play hockey. So there's, look at this, there's a ladder on that. It's a lovely kit, that's all I've got to say. It is such a sweet little kit. And, and here you've got the, um, the cross and the post. Um, so I don't know if that's where, if you were a bad sailor, you get strapped to it and tied to it. Or it's just the, um, the erection they had to have on board. So these are the instructions that I found, they're not for this exact kit, but they're basically a rebox of it by Zvezda, which was Conquistador. So you know, that's, that's the only one I could find. There is a Revel reboxing this, but I could not find instructions. I found the listing for the kit and the number of the kit, and you go to Revel's website, type in that number, and usually you can get instructions. But up comes the Viking ship. So either they reuse the number or the... Um, um, the listing that I had, I think it was off Scalemates, is using the wrong number for the kit. But anyhow, uh, this is basically your cover, that'll be your back, so we're going to see sort of doubling of pages here. But they got a bit of a blurb there, you can read all about him sort of, you know, travelling around the world, doing his circumcision. You've got the um, boat here, and they make this mistake every time they put the flags going backwards, which only happens if it's a motorised boat, right, driven by, you know, screws and props. When it's driven by sail, Everything goes forward. So that's how that flag goes forward. And some will say, oh, but it's tacking. Well, if it's tacking, then for that to be going that way, those sails have to be turned right across sideways. It's the only way you get that happening. Yes, don't give me that bullshit. Anyhow, just a little pet peeve of mine. Those flags should always go forwards. If you've got your sail square on, like she's running with the wind, then the wind will blow those flags forward. Greebles go on deck. And then here's the thing with the this keel, and there's a spacer, and of course you wouldn't have known that 
if you didn't have the instructions, so those keels and spaces, that all fits together. Then you can get that as whole halves together. And then on go your um, your four deck here, your quarter deck there, and you've got various bulkheads all together. And a huge big bowsprit, that's the one with the big pommel on. So that's probably the one that I found. And it all fits to the base. And you've got little little ones here of cannons and things to do. Oh, it's just a little stuff. There's, there's St. Gabriel with his wings. He's just got his arm in the air. He hasn't got a bugle. No. He doesn't have to blow his horn. Yep. No horns in this one. And um, then you've got basically the um, castle, four castle pieces, the rear castle pieces, stern castle, the um, transom or the back piece, you know, that rudder. And there's, yeah, that was, that one with a hole in it. I identified that part correctly. That was for the rudder. Probably never see it. Channel boards, there and there. Little channel boards go in. That's what your rat lines and your rigging and all your dead eyes and everything go on. And then you've got various bits and pieces that go on here and there and all oh, those things. Things and things and things. A lot of your sub assemblies from here all basically get put together here in part 10. And then surprisingly in the middle of this you've got your spray map and everything. So yeah, that's how I figured out I did have all the parts. So. That was good. Ah, uh, so here's your ladders. There's those fly screens. So basically they're set up so that, you know, you're not going to get any of those bugs going into that part of the ship. I don't know. They're grates for something or other. Who knows? Who knows? There's uh, the rum or the, um, could be powder keg, you know, for a gunpowder. Don't know. It's a barrel. I could cast a few more of those. You know, fill up the barrels. That'd be fun. There's those lovely little oars that I found. Some more fly screens. So the forward cabins there, especially because, you know, your toilet's up the front. The heads. Heads of the ship, Dunny. Yep, definitely need some ventilation there, mate. Those lovely fighting platforms and the mask going. So that's pretty well the construction and you're done and you would have it built. And then they've got a whole lot about the rigging. You can use their plastic rat lines. They can go on. Surprisingly, there's not much for the um, for the mizzen mast at all. Not at all. But they do give you full rigging instructions for fixed rigging here. There are all your forward stays. Oh, that's quite good. And then you start to get into your, your um, fangs, I think, for the um, for rigging the um, little gaff sail at the back there. So that's quite good. And then they go into the whole arrangement here at the bow with the whole sort of um, lifts, that sort of thing, and the uh, stays. And then you've got here, yes, yeah, stays. And, well, you know, you've got your halyards and looks like sheet lines and um, clue lines. So quite comprehensive for a kit like this, it really it gives you all the rigging that you need. Well, there you go. How about that, hey? The old Occidental kit is quite a rare find, and it's quite interesting. How about those sails? Cloth sails. You don't normally get that with a plastic model kit, and they've all got the little crosses on them and everything. It's been done. It's all ready to go. And, you know, the parts are unusual. The build's unusual. Don't have the original instructions. Yes, I've got those photocopies that I nicked off uh, Super Hobby's website. <laughs> but look, if somebody has the instructions for the Revel or the Zvezda kit and they'd like to send me a clean copy, I'd really appreciate that. You can send it via email or back camel or pigeon or just put it on a rock and throw it at me. No, don't do that. Don't do the last one. That's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. Now, I thought, seeing as it's Christmas, we're going to try something here. It may fail. Um, let's see if we can get Bass to give you a big Christmas meow. All right, hang on a sec. This could all end in tears. Everyone wants to see you. Stop being such a sausage. Oh, she fought me all the way. Why don't you look into the camera and tell everybody Christmas? Oh, oh dear, is that all you've got to say? You don't like being on TV, you see? Exploiting. I'm being exploited, being exploited. Well, I'm that grumpy note from Master Cat. <laughs> she just does not want to be here. See, say hello everyone. Hello, there you are. All right, <laughs> it's, it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Harry Houdini and Basque. Yes, Merry Christmas. I'm going to say Merry Christmas. I'm just going to scratch the nose. Oh, you're such a grump. You're such a grump. <laughs>